delighted to say that Michael Gass joins us on the phone. Good evening, Michael. Good evening. So, you must be absolutely delighted to have joined Barnet and you must hope this can kickstart your career again now. Yeah, obviously it was, um, it was a, a disappointment the way that I left Kiddy. Um, I think financial uh, reasons were, were the main reasons that I left the club. Um, but sometimes good things have to come to an end and it was, it was my time, it was the right time to leave. Um, and there's not you know, a better opportunity than going to uh, the team that's uh, top of the table. And Martin Allen, we've had him on this show before, well-respected and very experienced manager. What role did he have in bringing you to the club? Yeah, well, I spoke to, um, I spoke to Martin and he, um, he told me that he wanted me at the club. Um, you know, he was honest with me, he told me that he can't guarantee me a starting place, um, which, is, which is something I have to accept because, you know, they've got um, John O'Kendi, top goal scorer, and, and Charlie McDonald, the club captain, who's a very good player as well. So... It's going to be tough to get in front of them too, um, but he said that he wanted another good striker, um, you know, to to, uh, to play against them really, you know, challenge them in training, uh, put pressure on them, and everybody knows when you're fighting for spots, when there's, there's three of us fighting for two spots, it just improves everybody and, you know, ups their game um, in matches and, and especially in training. And, you know, I, I can't wait to get started with them. Um, I mean, you've gone from one promotion-chasing team in Kidderminster to another in Barnet. Is the pressure any different, or is it going to be the same at the club, do you feel? Um, obviously, with Barnet being top of the league, there's, um, there's probably a, a little bit more pressure on, on us to, to stay there and win the league. You know, it's a very tough league, and with only one automatic promotion place, there's a lot of pressure on the team that's top of the table, especially around Christmas time. Um, so I think you know, we'll go into each game as it comes. Uh, looking to win every game and trying to pull a, a bit further away from the teams below us. And now you look at Kidderminster, obviously they've had to sell key players, including yourself, but they're still up in and around the playoffs. Do you think they've got the capability to withstand their financial troubles and still possibly gain promotion this season? Yeah, I, like you said, I'd say that they have, um, they've lost key players, uh, Nathan Blissett and uh, Shay Dunkley. Um, good young players for the team and, and we're performing for the team but they've got good players there still um, and as you can see uh, from, the, from the league table um, they're in and around it and they've definitely got um, good enough players to stay in there and, and definitely challenge for the playoffs um, At 28 you could be being seen as at the peak of your career surely this is the best time for you to gain promotion well, yeah, you'd like to think so. Um, people say, you know, you're coming to your prime around 27, 28, 29. Um, so hopefully I can, you know, get back into the swing of things. Uh, going to Nuneaton um, was obviously part-time football. Um, so getting back into full-time football is, is a major thing. And hopefully it can just kick me on. Um, hopefully perform when I come on. Uh, do enough in training um, to impress the, the gaffer and hopefully get my chance. And then uh, we'll go from there, hopefully score a few goals for them. And it's been well documented, including by myself in, in a newspaper piece a couple of months back. You've been so close to the Football League so many times, so many different moves or promotion opportunities, particularly with Kiddy when finishing second. Has there ever come a point where you've stopped believing and thought this is just not going to happen? No, I don't think you can ever stop believing, Michael. It's um... Just like Journey would say. Yeah, it's... Uh... It's a dream to play in the Football League. You know, I've got friends that have all played in the Football League and are still playing there now. So, um, like you said, I've missed out on, on many occasions, really, whether it be uh, through uh, challenging at the top and, and missing out through playoffs um, or uh, teams wanting to sign me, but uh, the team I'm at not accepting the bid because it wasn't enough for them, which, you know, I can, I can accept. It's disappointing. But I'm now at Barnet, who are top of the league. Um, we've got a great, great team, a uh, great manager, and hopefully this can be my year. Um, obviously, you're very new to the club. What are your first impressions of the setup and the management, and how does it vary to that at Kidderminster? Yeah, I've, I've been in there, um, I think, four or five days now, um, and the setup's unbelievable. Um, I'd be surprised if there's, if there's many uh, League Two clubs that have got a setup better than Barnet. Um, the ground, the training ground, the facilities around there 
uh, absolutely fantastic. Obviously, it's, it's a new stadium and new training ground, um, but it's it's absolutely brilliant. Um, and all the staff have uh, welcomed me. Um, not only the uh, you know the football staff, but behind the scenes, secretary, the chairman, everybody being very welcoming, and it's it's a great club to be at. And when you look back to January 2013, you referred to how things ended disappointingly at Kidderminster. If you could go back to yourself at the time, would there be a bit of you that would say stay at Cambridge United given what happened since and where they are now? Yeah, it's, it's all in hindsight, really. Um, at that time, it, w it was the right move for me, Michael. Um, I know you're a Cambridge fan yourself, but that moment in time, Kidderminster were, were fighting neck and course, neck with Mansfield yeah. for the title. Um, I had the opportunity to go there thinking that I can help them towards winning the title um, or even through the playoffs. Unfortunately, it didn't work. Um, we lost uh, to Wrexham in, in the playoffs. In the following season, Cambridge get promoted. I've got no bitterness or anything. Cambridge United is a great club. Uh, they helped me um, a lot in, in my football when I was younger and then going back there. Um, you know, great set of fans as well. And I, I was happy. I've still got a couple of friends there. Um, and I was happy when they went up, and uh, it's good to see them, obviously, with a great FA Cup draw as well. And just one quick one to finish, um, coming off the back of that point about Kidderminster, we had your manager, Martin Allen, who said he doesn't think there is a debate concerning three up or two up. I'm guessing you would probably echo that view. Sorry, Mark, I, I couldn't hear you then, sorry. I said, I'm guessing we had Martin Allen on saying he doesn't even think it's a debate that you would agree with conference gaining three promotion places. Well, exactly. It's um, <laughs> to, for only one team to go up is uh, is so tough, and the amount of good teams in this league and and big clubs in this league for only one team to go up it's um, it's something that I, I believe, and I think you ask anybody in this league, it, it should be changed to at least automatically uh, two automatic, and then one through the playoffs. Because, uh, like I said, the the amount of big clubs and and teams that that are good enough to play in League Two for one to go to one to go up automatically is uh, something that needs to change, and hopefully it will do in the near future. Thank you very much for your time, Michael. We hope that this season will be your time to finally get into the football league with Barnet, and you've got every chance of doing so. And everyone here at Non League Chat wishes you the best of luck with that endeavour. Thanks, okay, Michael. Okay, man. Thanks, Michael. Take care. Cheers. Bye, bye, bye. bye, -bye.